Okay, so for the purpose of this video, we will be using a Jones reed. So these are the typical Jones reeds. This one is medium soft. You can tell it's Jones normally by the red. And they come in these little, we call them coffins. Um, this reed, we'll be working on it to try and make it a little bit more free blowing, etc. So the first thing I notice on this reed is that the tip opening, well, I already adjusted it a little bit, but it was quite large. So to adjust the tip opening, you wanna just gently take your pliers and you see that first wire, gently squeeze it. A little bit goes a long way. So now it's a little bit better. And how you can test the reed is by putting it in your mouth and making your um, lips go up to the first wire and making what we call a crow. If you make the crow, you should get upper and lower partials. This one has a very good crow. Um, things you'll need to adjust a reed. First, you'll need a mandrel. And you need a mandrel with a holding tip. You don't wanna have a forming tip, cause that is to make reeds. This one is just to hold them on there while you uh, adjust them, just to give you a little bit more stability. The next thing you're gonna need is a plaque. These are clear ones. They are the best to see through the reed, but they are not the best if you are very forgetful or you lose things very easily because they are clear. The last thing you will need is a file. Now bassoons, bassoonists also use knives. I personally use knives and oboists use knives, but the file is, um, first of all, it's a lot cheaper. These are like $10 or $5 or something for a pack at Walmart. That's where I got this one. And a knife can be like $100. And also, it's a bit safer to have if you want to have it at your school. Just having this file is a lot more school friendly than having a knife. Okay, so other than the tip opening, for me, this reed sounds a bit too dark and stuffy, and it's really hard to play on. Well, it's not really hard to play on. It's hard to play on for me because I'm used to a lighter reed. So if you have a student that comes in and says, hey, this reed is just hard to play on, I can't get enough air through it. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your file and you're gonna go into what we call the channels. And the channels are going to be this area back here. This right here is the spine. This here is the heart. And up here is what we call the half moon. So to make it more free blowing, I'm gonna scrape on the channels and a little tiny bit on the heart. You normally don't wanna to touch the heart too much because that is the stability and the tone of the reed. So let's start with the back channels and you wanna just kind of rub it in, file away some cane. And while you're doing that, you wanna avoid the sides. Those are called the rails. So on the rails, I think these this reed has very nice rails. Um, you can see they taper very well. For your rails, you want them to start thick and then go thinner gradually as a taper, not as like a bubble or a straight line. So for this read, I'm not gonna mess with the rails. They already look really good. I'm just going to scrape in these channels and see what happens. And I'm gonna avoid the spine. The spine was gonna, is gonna add structure to the read. So that spine will hold the read up and in place and make sure that it doesn't collapse when the player is using it. Okay, so this side, you're getting some cane off. 
You don't want to take off too much at once because you can always take cane off. You can't always put it back on. Now I'm going to do the other side. And some people um, scrape their reeds like this. Some people go like this, just to make sure it's even. Uh, I don't like doing that because I feel like it gets too close to the spine and I don't want to be going back and forth. If you see how I'm holding it, the mandrel is down here and then I'm adding this finger here for stability because you don't want to just press hard and have the reed crack in half. Okay, now I'm gonna touch the heart very, very little. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just kind of blend, blend, blend. Now we're gonna try that crow again, dip it in some water. Oh, that also reminds me, I did soak this in water before I scraped on it. Always soak the reed in water before you scrape on it. You don't wanna dry scrape reeds. You get a good crow out of it. Let's hear how it sounds. Get it on on my bassoon. I'm going to be playing F major scale. <laughs> that octave sounds really good, really even. So now I'm going to try the upper octave. <laughs> adjusted. So if your students ever come in and they need their reed to be a bit more free blowing or if they need their reed to be a little less dark then that's how you're going to do it. Just lightly scrape on the channels and lightly scrape up here on the heart. 